How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boy Lie Hobby Time. This week we're back in the wild imaginary west with another terrifying monster. I bought this box of minis the other day with one particular character in mind. This gentleman right here. Not only does he have a good pose, but also the perfect mindset for an adventurer of the wild west. As you can see, originally it looks like he's posing with his rifle, like he's going to be interviewed by Good Morning America for his new book Baby Steps. But after a little customization, he was ready to take on the creatures and caverns of this monstrous world. To light up the lantern, I used one of these little nano LEDs. I drilled a hole through Leo's hand, I wrapped the wire around his arm, ran it down his back and leg so that later on I could run it through the base. For the housing of the lantern, I cut a little piece off a styrene tube, I bent a little brass rod, I glued those together and then into his hand, and I set him aside to work on the base. I used this leftover sheet of plywood to build the rest of the diorama on top of. When I started this project, I was thinking I'd have a window of sorts to look into the diorama through, so I traced out the shape that I was looking for onto a piece of XPS foam, and I cut it out with a hot wire. Once the front was cut out, I had a better idea of how big the rest of the diorama needed to be, so I cut eight more layers of foam, began carving out the shape of the interior of the cave. I started with the middle of the cave, where the subterranean lake shore will be, then I worked down into the lake, and then I flipped everything over and I carved out the roof of the cave. Once every layer of foam had been carved, I glued it all together with some foam safe super glue, which is not to be confused with any other type of super glue. And once all of the layers had been glued together, I glued the whole thing down to the plywood base using more of that foam safe super glue. The inspiration for this diorama was a photo I saw of Son Dung Cave in Vietnam. I made the cave too shallow, so I added an additional section at the back with a large opening in the roof, which could provide the beautiful and somewhat spooky lighting for this diorama. I placed a floor at the same level as the shoreline of the underground lake, and then proceeded to fill the back room with lots of different types of rocks. I used a combination of pre-made plaster rocks as well as a foam rock for the large back wall of the room, which I textured with a utility knife and by ripping with my fingers. Once the room had been thoroughly surfaced and it looked like it would fit in with the rest of the rocky cavern, I cleaned up my workstation and it was time to get it dirty again by applying a terrain paste. I gloved up, then mixed up some plaster, paint, mod podge, and water till it was a nice brushable consistency. I don't have a written recipe for these ingredients because I need it to be a little bit different every single time. This time it needed to be able to fill some gaps but also be able to be brushed on and not hide all of the detail that I had carved into the foam. Once all the hard to reach areas had been reached, I glued the back room to the front room using more of that foam safe super glue and then I covered the rest of the cave with the mix. After I had given that some time to dry, I came back and I covered up all the areas that would be underwater with another layer of Mod Podge. This was to seal any potential cracks or gaps that would allow the resin to leak. If there's a way to escape, the resin will for sure find it. It's like the Harry Houdini of crafting materials. Speaking of escape artists, the featured monster of this build is this octopus. I took it and Leo outside, I primed them black, and then I began painting the octopus. I wanted to go with a color scheme that suggested this octopus lived in a lightless environment. I know that one of the major attributes of an octopus is its ability to change the pigmentation of its skin to hide, but this guy swims around in absolute darkness with a bunch of other animals that also swim around in absolute darkness, so they wouldn't even be able to see him anyways. After the Mod Podge layer had dried, I took the cave outside and I primed it black as well. You can already see here the effect that I'm going for without any color, but I wanted to brighten up the inside of the back of the cave and give it some color to make the diorama a little bit more beautiful and dramatic. I started with a light gray from a rattle can and then I broke out the airbrush. I wanted to capture the look of my reference photo, painted on some blues, followed by various shades of green, followed by a beam of bright pale yellow. Like I mentioned earlier, the plan was to include a cutout viewing window for the front of the diorama, but I felt like it would detract from the presentation, so I decided to pull that and move the resin line back an inch. 
I cut up this sheet of plexiglass to my desired height to create a barrier to contain the resin. I then threw on some gloves and I used some silicone to glue it in place. Silicone creates a watertight seal, or in this case, a resin-tight seal, which prevents the resin from escaping and creating a puddle of mayhem on my hobby mat, which has happened more times than I care to admit. The silicone takes 24 hours to cure completely, so after gluing the octopus into its position at the bottom of the pool, I left it for a day, and then I came back to pour the resin. I'm using a deep pour slow curing resin from Magic Resin, and it has a cure time of 5 days which keeps the resin from overheating when you mix it in large volumes. I wanted the water to be nice and dark and mineral rich looking, so I added a large amount of black, brown, and turquoise. After the pigments were in, I blended it all thoroughly. I popped the bubbles from the mixing process with a butane torch, and then it was time to pour. After filling the lake to the brim, I tended to the surface for about an hour, making sure that nothing was leaking and everything looked okay. I then covered it up, and I set it aside for five days. While we wait for that to cure, I'm going to paint this little explorer and give him some backstory. I'd also like to take the time to thank all of my patrons. This is Leo. Leo was born in Illinois in 1850. When he was 16, he left home and crossed the mighty Mississippi, and lived in St. Louis for a short time before following his dreams of exploring the Wild West. Since leaving St. Louis, Leo had only been back across the river once during his many years of adventure. While Leo did have a forestall, and many other modern technologies, he preferred to travel light and survive in the ways that his native friends had taught him. He may seem oblivious to the creature lurking in the water, but I think he knows it's there, and I bet he has some survival tricks up his sleeve. After five days had passed, the resin was nice and hard, and it was time to remove the acrylic. I sliced the silicone in a few spots at the edge of the acrylic and I snapped it away from the foam, and it was very satisfying. The terrain paste peeled away from the foam on the sides, but that's okay, because I needed to cover up the edges with a nice clean surface anyways. I cut out this shape on another piece of acrylic. The last things to do were to put Leo into his position, wire him up to a battery, and then put the nice clean black sides on all the edges of the diorama. And after that, I called it good. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.